Everyone, welcome back to another Hardware News Recap. This week, talking about some, some Buildzoid Boys news. The potential Navi reference design that was leaked has been analyzed by our friend Buildzoid from Actually Hardcore Overclock, and we'll be briefly recapping that. Uh, rumors about Comet Lake using potentially 10,000 series branding, and then a couple of other news items like Ryzen and Epic sales doubling, 7 nanometer slated for third quarter, and uh, global chip sales suffering a massive sequential decline. Before that, this video is brought to you by the Gigabyte Z390 AORUS Master Motherboard, which comes equipped with one of the more powerful Z390 VRMs for heavier overclocks on the new 9th gen Intel CPUs. The AORUS Master is also one of the few motherboards with a real heatsink this generation, featuring a mix of high surface area fins and looks oriented cover blocks. Oh, and it's also got updated RGB illumination. Learn more at the link below. So the first news item is from Buildzoid. There were leaked images of an AMD PCB, supposedly. This is, when you're dealing with leaks, just keep in mind that it could turn out not to be true. But uh, this one looks pretty compelling. So presumably, it's a reference design for some variant of, one would assume, Navi, and uh, slated for further discussion at Computex in a couple weeks from now. Uh, also, this leaked image, or images, it gave the the collective internet, something to speculate about. Always a healthy thing. Resident VRM specialist Buildzoid has done his take on the, uh, as he calls it, baseless speculation on the reference PCB. A couple of items of note here. The images show eight memory packages surrounding the GPU, and the packages show a BGA package size of 180 balls on the ball grid array. It indicates potential use of GDDR6 memory. According to Buildzoid, the eight-phase VRM could be making use of 70-amp smart power stages and using two eight-pin connectors. The card likely approaches a 300-watt TDP, anything more than that. And as Buildzoid says, the card <laughs> becomes a meme. So uh, as, as eloquently pointed out by Buildzoid, that does scare people away from going over 300 watts. Uh, the screw arrangement also on the, on the board aligns with what we've seen of AMD's blower fan designs, as uh, Buildzoid aptly pointed out as well. So you'll see this on Frontier Edition on Vega 56 and 64, and the hope is that we don't see final models using a blower fan. We would strongly encourage you to check out Buildzoid's video. We'll link it below. It's also in the show notes, and you can check him out on Actually Hardcore Overclocking, but it's a fun, quick analysis of something that may end up just being a rumor, but uh, it does look like a bit more than that. Let's just get all the rumors out of the way at the beginning of the show. Uh, one more for this show. Comet Lake, potentially using 10,000 series branding and 14 nanometer plus plus from Intel. The current leak suggests that Intel's upcoming Comet Lake CPUs will be another extension of the company's 14 nanometer node following continual difficulties with 10 nanometer. And we'll also add another digit in Intel's already convoluted line of CPU names. The Comet Lake series coming out is rumored to be using 10,000 series branding. Now, if that remains true, we'll see. It's, it's really, it's not good branding if so. So we, we would hope that that would change. But the desktop part uh, would come with as many as 10 cores. And the Comet Lake microarchitecture is an alleged successor to Coffee Lake and Whiskey Lake. And SKUs are expected to arrive sometime in the fourth quarter of the year. Not much else is known currently. There will be the core desktop parts coming in, in addition to the lower power U series. Comet Lake is expected to recycle parts of previous architectures like the IGP from the 9000 series and uh, maybe aspects of Skylake as well. Next up is Supermicro. Supermicro is a, a, a pretty large motherboard supplier in the data center enterprise space, but has been making a push in gaming lately. Supermicro has been looking to shift production outside of China. And this is in a bid to, uh, to sort of steady the concerns over Chinese backdoors into espionage, like what I think it was Bloomberg brought up previously. So Supermicro will begin moving production away from China. Last year, uh, it was the Bloomberg report, serviced alleging that Supermicro's motherboards made in China had been compromised with a malicious chip acting as a backdoor to hack Supermicro customers like Apple and Amazon. And uh, pretty much everybody except for Bloomberg denied these claims, and initial testing did fail to substantiate those claims, but it hurt Supermicro nonetheless, which is unfortunate if they turned out to be untrue, which thus far there's been no conclusive proof that they were true. Supermicro, if you doubt their size, it is the world's third largest server supplier. 
and it sits behind HP and Dell, respectively. So Supermicro is a big company. It took a big hit from those allegations. And since last October, when Bloomberg's report came out, Supermicro has seen a significant decline in sales, especially in the U.S. According to the analysts in this story, it's possible that Supermicro could slide into fourth place, which would put it behind Amazon. Supermicro has since accelerated its ambitions of becoming more self-reliant and has broken ground on a new $65 million factory in Taoyuan, which is in Taiwan. Not, it's about 40 minutes away from Taipei, where we go to Computex. Uh, so that'll be something interesting to follow up on as it expands. Rising in Epic sales, doubling in AMD's first quarter 2019 earnings report. So AMD reported its first quarter 19 earnings whilst also accelerating its 50th anniversary. And while the company's earnings were a bit mixed, they were stronger than anticipated. AMD's GPU and semi-custom sales were sluggish, but were offset by the doubling of Ryzen and Epic sales. This, according to AMD, has led to its sixth consecutive quarter of market share gain, although no metrics were provided. AMD also doubled down on its projection that it will gain a double-digit market share in the server market this year. AMD reported $1.27 billion in revenue for the quarter, and most importantly, reported increasing margins of 41%, up 5% quarter over quarter. AMD is also predicting a $1.52 billion second quarter 2019, driven by the launch of its 7 nanometer product stack. AMD CEO Lisa Su said in an earnings call that AMD will deliver its 7 nanometer Navi and Epic Rome in the third quarter. According to Sue, the first Navi-based graphics card will be situated, quote, below where the Radeon 7 is positioned from a pricing standpoint. Knocked over the CPUs. Sorry, 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 Dr. Lisa Sue. That said, it seems the first round of Navi cards will indeed address the mid-range segment. Let me just, I'll just fix those. One of these is the 50th anniversary too. That was it's about as disrespectful as you could get in this news segment. Uh, so it looks like they'll address the mid-range segment. The flagship cards will come later. And we'll have a lot of reporting on this come Computex, which, again, just a couple weeks away. So stay subscribed or get subscribed if you want to catch all that coverage. And if you want more information on AMD sales and performance, you can check our two uh, market share videos. So we have one. It just looks at what our audience buys. So you can't extrapolate to the whole market. We're really just looking at what our viewers purchase. So it's a small section of the market for sure, small section of a small market, uh, but it's still interesting. In CPU land, we've seen AMD actually uh, cross paths with Intel and AMD has now jumped ahead in sales volume to our viewers and readers. And in GPU land, AMD is, is still struggling. Not quite as bad as in 2017 with all the cards going to miners, but uh, struggling nonetheless, but the upside is the CPU sales. So interesting content pieces if you haven't seen them. Highlighting AMD's bullish server market expectations is Amazon in another story as it continues to invest in AMD's Epic platform. Amazon Web Services has announced another Epic-based offering for its EC2 or Elastic Compute Cloud instances. The new Epic-powered T3A is a mix of cost and throughput, according to AWS. The new T3A instance is for workloads that not requiring long sustained throughput needs, but offers instead burst performance for when those workloads see a spike in throughput or usage requirements. The T3A joins other AWS instances powered by Epic, such as the M5, the R5, the M5AD, the R5AD, and similar instances. According to the World Semiconductor Trade Statistics Organization, chip sales have declined globally by as much as 15.5% sequentially during the first quarter of 2019, which marks the largest decline since 2001 and the fourth largest decline since 1984. The Semiconductor Industry Association, or SIA Trade Group, recently stated the following, quote, sales in March decreased on a year-to-year -year basis across all major regional markets and semiconductor product categories, consistent with the cyclical trend the global market has experienced recently. According to IC Insights, there have only been seven quarters where the chip sales have fallen by more than 10% sequentially, and that dates back again to 84. So uh, another quote here from IC Insights states that, quote, the first quarter is usually the weakest quarter of the year for the IC market, averaging a sequential decline of 2.1% over the past 36 years. But the severity of the first quarter 19 and fourth quarter 18 IC market drop has started the year off at a very low level. And IC Insights also painted a grim picture for 2019 
with a double-digit decline predicted for the rest of the year, unless second half 19 is marked by a particularly strong rebound. The SIA also called for U.S. policymakers to draft policies aimed at bolstering and sustaining the semiconductor market. In a final quote, they stated, to help foster growth and innovation in the semiconductor industry and ensure continued U.S. leadership in semiconductor technology, policymakers in Washington should enact measures that invest in scientific research, attract and retain a top technology workforce, and ensure open markets and strong protection of intellectual property. Speaking of intellectual property and the lack of intellect whatsoever, the Razor Toaster is becoming a thing. Yes, yes, it's actually happening. The thing that was supposed to be an April Fool's joke. So, uh, Razor's 2016 April Fool's prank, which played on a 2012 or 2013 demand for Razor Toasters, has transcended the world of pranks and memes and will now become an actual product. And apparently Razor CEO uh, Min Lian Tan actually thinks it's going to be good. Razor CEO posted the following uh, on Facebook, said, all right, I didn't think these guys were going to make it, but they did. It was to hit 1 million likes, and with each Razor toaster tattoo being equivalent to 100,000 likes each, they now have 12 Razor tattoos. Well, what can I say? I, okay, I'm going to stop reading this quote because it's like, there's a lot of dot, dot, dots, and that's a run-on sentence. Anyway, the point of the quote was that uh, Razor basically said, if you can get this idea of a Razor toaster up to a million likes on Facebook, for which every Razor tattoo will count toward the like count uh, 100,000 more points, then we'll make a toaster. And there were 12 Razor Toaster tattoos, uh, and um, that got them there. So anyway, uh, the Razor CEO liked the page as well, and he claims he's actually putting together his team of designers and engineers to design a Razor Toaster. Now, if this happens, we're going to review it. We don't really review home appliances or toasters. Probably make a lot more money doing that. But if we did, uh, this would be the start to it. So mark my words, if the Razor Toaster happens, we will not only pre-order it uh, and try to get early sampling, we'll buy a couple other toasters and do a roundup because Razor has uh, a, uh, a reputation in the PC industry, and we're curious to see if that reputation will apply in the home appliance industry. It's just our only request, specifically Josh on our team, our only request is that it has a crumb tray. Please don't forget the crumb tray in favor of underglow green LEDs. Anyway, uh, yeah, so that's happening. Keep an eye out for it at some point. It'll probably take a couple of years to design. <laughs> but uh, anyway, NIDEC, last story, anticipates a massive decline in hard drive shipments for second, or actually just for 2019 in general. Uh, NIDEC is a Japanese manufacturer of small precision motors, and it expects hard drive shipments to be especially weak through 2019. NIDEC supplies around 85% of all spindle motors that power hard drives, so that lends a certain amount of credence to the prediction that the company expects hard drive shipments to fall as much as 50% in 2019. According to the PowerPoint financial presentation, NIDEC is preparing for a 50% year-over-year decline in hard drive motor sales, revising its uh, hard drive shipment forecast from 356 million units to 309 million units. And if you're thinking that doesn't sound that bad, well, uh, NIDEC is expecting further downtrend through the year into next year and uh, is adjusting its shipment expectations accordingly. As for the 50% year-over-year decline, uh, so they're looking at a hard drive shipment forecast, 356 million units to 309 million units, down to 290 million units in 2020. But uh, its own sales, NIDEC is projecting that it will move from 124 million units in 2018 to 64 million units, ouch, in 2019. And on a positive note, external drives and uh, nearline storage are expected to see an increase in sales to make up for some of that gap. So that's it for this one. As always, you can subscribe for more. And again, the biggest show of the year for us is coming up soon. It'll be in Taipei, Taiwan for Computex. We'll be out there in the next couple of weeks. It's coming up really fast. Have lots of cool content planned. So make sure you're uh, staying tuned for that and get hyped to see some of your favorite YouTubers or overclockers on the channel with us. 
And otherwise, store.gamersnexus.net to help out directly, like by buying one of these Graph logo shirts, or you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to get access to our new behind-the-scenes video. I'll see you all next time.